What's going on, you guys? My name is Lloyd. Welcome to the Single Guy channel. I am not the single guy, but on this channel, we talk a lot about dating subjects for men, and we're going to talk today about hypergamy, okay? Kind of my thoughts on the matter, and hopefully, I can take a kind of more positive spin to it than a lot of the other things that I've seen written about it, because when you get into this kind of red pill area, you know, I find that men can get, they start feeling a little uh, negative towards women, they start feeling negative towards dating in general, um, and it, it shouldn't be, you know? Like, dating should be fun, dating should be happy. You should, you know, I would hope that you guys could get to where I am, where I truly enjoy going out and meeting women, interacting with them, dating them, and just having a good time. So uh, hopefully after watching this video, you know, you can get closer and closer to that point. I'm not saying you can get the whole way, but hopefully you get closer. So for those of you who don't know what hypergamy is, hypergamy is basically marrying or having sex with somebody of a higher socioeconomic status than you, okay? The classic example of this is uh, Cinderella, okay? You know, she's a commoner and then she ends up marrying a prince and, you know, that obviously she becomes royalty. But when she was just a commoner. So what you, what people take from this is that women are always looking to date up. They're always looking to go, to go for a higher, a guy of higher socioeconomic status, uh, whatever it is. I would say it's not so much socioeconomic status as it is of like mate value. Mate value encompasses a lot of other different things uh, as well, as well as your socioeconomic status. But you know, I would say that's kind of true. Women are not trying to date down. That's definitely true. They are trying to date at the same level as them or above. And even when it comes to hooking up, I would generally see this as being true. The only time that they will go down is if the guy is like especially good looking or um, they're really, really horny or something like that. Uh, or maybe that's just, you know, they just love being promiscuous and they just use guys as, uh, <laughs> as toys, um, which can definitely happen. Um, so... Why do guys get upset about this? Men get upset about this, and I understand why. I used to get upset about it too, which is where if women are all going for the same top guys, then that leaves so many guys out there that are just gonna be, you know, women aren't gonna want them. Women aren't gonna want them to be their girlfriends. Women aren't gonna wanna sleep with them, and they're just kinda left to the wayside. And we're actually seeing this to a certain extent with our today's society. You know, we have, um, I think like 30% of the male population is like basically, you know, an involuntary celibate. You know, they call these people incels. And they get kind of very bitter about it. And they decide that, you know, they're, that life's not fair and, you know, things are working against them. And so I'm hoping that this will kind of maybe inspire them or, or, or maybe get them to think about it in a different light so um, they can stop the negative spiral that's happening to them. Because it breaks my heart when I see people people in, in this area. And, you know, I used to be in this area too, so I can definitely relate to what's going on. All right. So the idea behind this is that women are always trying to date up. And, you know, some guys get upset about it because they feel like they're going to be left to the wayside. They feel like they're just not going to get any love from women. For me, however, when, you know, as a motivated and positive thinking guy, didn't always used to be, I actually saw that as a positive. And the reason why I saw it as a positive because it's like, hey, look, if I work hard, I go after the goals, I improve myself, I achieve the things that I'm that I'm out there to do, I learn how to be appealing to the opposite sex, dude, I can get a lot of different opportunities. I can better myself, it's possible. When it comes to mate value, it's not just things that are already set in stone. You know, you can definitely change your socioeconomic um, status in today's day and age. It's very possible. I'm a testament to this, you know. With this business flourishing, I used to be a guy who had no money whatsoever. I had negative $2,000 in my bank account when I started this business. It ain't negative $2,000 anymore, I'll tell you that. So it's possible for you to improve that. And it's also possible to improve who you are in terms of your mate value. You know, you can learn how to talk to people. You can learn how to be a better person. You can learn how to have better style. You can learn how to like have game and create friend groups and and raise your social status. It's all possible. Like I, I when I saw this, it was kind of like I was like, I, I can't believe this is the uh, you know I have the ability to be so great with women. They don't have as much wiggle room. That's kind of the difference between men and women. I think in today's society and I've. Lately, I've been talking a lot about the differences between men and women. I think it's fun. But, you know, you see, like, think about the richest people in the world. You know, almost all of them are men. And even the women that are up there, a lot of them, you know, because their husband died or they're the heir uh, to, like, a f fortune. I think um, the, Wal the Waltons are, uh, are one of these people. So um, you see them a lot. I think they're worth, like, 50 billion each. Um, and some of them are women. Okay. 
Not saying that women can't be aspiring entrepreneurs, they definitely can. But what you'll see is that men are at the top and the bottom of society. If you look to say, if you look around a city, how many of those homeless people are guys? It's like 95%. I'm not saying there aren't any homeless women out there. They definitely are, and I've been yelled at and spit at by them, but uh, most of them are men. As a guy, it's kind of like you have these extremes. You know, you can you can either be like left to the wayside and nobody cares about you, or you know, you can be, you know, a very successful person that everybody looks up to. Um, it happens with women. There's definitely a lot of variability with women as well too, especially as times change. But I'd say for a guy, you know, that's the kind of, that's the either the benefit or the pain to being a guy. It's however you choose to look at it. With a lot of these issues, because you can change them and you do have the ability to change them, it's basically a message. It's saying, hey, look, listen, these are the two possibilities of your life. You can either be somebody who ends up becoming part of the bottom 30%, who ends up getting left to the wayside, or you can be part of the other side, which does have a lot more options with women, who does have the ability to date the girls and women that he wants to date and create the sexual um, and relationship life that they're looking for. So which choice are you going to make? You know, I offer you to think about this in this video. Is there a way that I can improve my circumstance to make myself more appealing to women? And I guarantee you the answer is not no. I guarantee you there are things that you can do right now and you might not be in the physical and mental state to be able to start doing this and that's okay, I wasn't either. But what you can start doing is you can start improving the little things, improve your mental, physical state to, to a level where you can start actually making improvements in your life. And then from there you work your way up. And then I can tell you guys, the benefit of being at the bottom and then rising to the top is so immense on your soul, on who you are as a person. It's so gratifying that you have an appreciation for when things are going bad and when things are going good. You know, I know guys that have always been at the top that are the hypergamous guys that were born into wealth, that were born into good looks, that were born into all of the things that people in the forums, they envy so much and they talk about how, they, how it's not fair how these guys are getting all of these same things. Being a guy in that position, you know, I see the pain in their hearts and in their souls. They don't know what it's like to live a meager life. They don't know what it's like to be passed up and treated as dirt or vermin. They don't know what it's like being in your shoes. But I do, because I've been there. And I can tell you, when you come out of that and you're able to raise and go up to, I'm not, I'm not at the top, but I'm definitely a lot higher than what I was, it's so gratifying. You get to look at your life and you have a general appreciation for what happens with you. You know what it's like to be on both sides of the same coin. And the benefit to being a guy is that, you know, we're not operating on lost time here. You know, we're able to improve our circumstance and we're able to go after the things that we want. So I understand that hypergamy, once you learn about it, can be a very disempowering thing for some people who think negatively about themselves, who think that they won't be able to achieve it. But I'm telling you, if you don't believe yourself, believe me. I know if you're watching this video, you have the ability to do that. You've already gone out and looked for the answers. You're already going out and looking for explanations as to why your life is the way that it is. Stop looking for explanations about why it isn't and start looking for explanations about why it could be better, about why you can change your, 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 um, your own circumstance. People who believe they can and people who believe they can't are usually right. And I find that the guys who fall in the bottom 30% who complain about hypergamy, who like moan about it and bemoan their situations like I used to be, they are in the camp that doesn't believe that they can change their lives for the better, who doesn't believe that they can succeed. And because of that, it's a disempowering thought for them. So when I think about it, I actually get happy when I think about hypergamy because I know I'm going to be getting a lot of opportunities and yeah sure it does sadden me that some other guys are going to be losing out but I know what it's like being one of those guys and I know that it's it just takes a decision a decision every single day to not be a victim and actually step up and take charge of your own life and start being the kind of guy that women go for it's a call to action it's good that women do this because if they didn't men would slack off men would not take care of themselves men would just kind of go to the wayside and play video games all day and not better the world. So thank God women keep us honest and make sure that we're going out there and we're doing the things that we need to do to better society. And I know some of you are watching this video and thinking, hey, but I work hard at my software job or whatever it is and I'm not getting any love from women. And 
Basically, you have a great product, women see it, you just need to work on your marketing. And so there's plenty of other videos where I talk about how to market yourself to women, how to show that you are one of the guys that they want to get with. And you know, this, you're not gonna find it in this video, but I have tons of stuff on that subject. So I would encourage you to look at that. So yes, hypergamy for some people can be very disempowering, but for me, it's very empowering. And hopefully after seeing this video, if you're one of the guys who see hypergamy as a disempowering thought, as something that to, you know, to, to, to motivate you to not do something, why should I even bother trying? Hopefully I've pushed you a little bit more into the direction of, yes, I can change my circumstance and it is possible. And you'd be surprised, man. Like I, the hypergamy is not as bad as people think. It's not just like women are going after rich dudes all the time. Like they, like most of them would like a guy around their level. Um, dating somebody so far outside of, you know, their realm, someone who's like way more wealthy or way better looking or, you know, got way better game or, or whatever it is, um, is, is a little bit, the compatibility is going to be an issue. And women really care about compatibility. So they usually end up with a guy who's who's around uh, whatever their perceived level is uh, to be. So yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it too much in terms of that respect. But again, it's a it's an invitation. It's it's not a death sentence, and that's how I hope you choose to think about it in the future, you guys. Thanks a lot. If you made it to end, consider subscribing. Tell me what you guys thought about this. I'm you know hopefully trying to put a positive spin on a lot of negative things I see in the when it comes to dating advice in the you know, the manosphere community. So um, hopefully this will improve in the future. This is something that I teach my clients. This is something that I teach uh, people who are in my coaching programs. Um, and so hopefully you got a little taste of that in this video. Thanks a lot. Good luck out there.